Hi, this is JJ DiGeronimo from Tech Savvy Women, and I am so fortunate today to have Amy Franco. Not only is she a Tech Savvy Woman, she is a very successful entrepreneur who spends a lot of her personal time working with leaders in the community. And there's one specific aspect uh, that I particularly like uh, of her work that I'd like to mention here, which is her work uh, with why Nice Girls Don't Get the Corner Office. Uh, this is a book out there, and I think it's a great way to start the conversation. So welcome, Amy, and can you tell us a little bit about that book? Yeah, thank you for having me here. So to tell you just a little bit about the premise behind the book, Nice Girls Don't Get the Corner Office, it was written by Dr. Lois Frankel in 2004, and there was a 10-year anniversary edition published last year in 2014. The premise behind the book is that we, as women, are often conditioned growing up to exhibit behaviors that only serve us to a certain point growing up. But these same behaviors that we often learn, things like avoiding conflict, um, always looking to, uh, sometimes we're acquiescing or pulling people for their opinions before making decisions, things like that, they only serve us to a certain point. Mm -hmm. And when we get into the workforce, when we get into higher levels of leadership, those same behaviors can often hold us back. And the, the linchpin of, of it is that we, most of the time, don't realize that we are exhibiting those behaviors. So we need to become aware of them so that we can counteract them and make sure that we are positioning ourselves as the very best uh, leaders that we can. That is fantastic advice, and I think it's great and will resonate with many people that watch this video. So what are you seeing, you work with so many corporations, what are you seeing that corporations are doing to sort of pull more thought diversity up into higher levels of the org chart? So a couple of things that organizations are doing, and, and I, will, I will answer this question from the angle of skill development, because there are a lot of things organizationally, culturally, that more top companies are doing in order to attract and retain women. But from purely a, a skill-building, leadership development standpoint, top companies are specifically making investments in developing their emerging women leaders for women who they see as their high performers, who they want to put into stretch assignments, maybe global assignments. They are making very specific investments into programming, to help them build those skills. And those investments are also tied to the bottom line. So they are seen as business investments. They're not seen as nice to have, they are seen as new caps. And then to follow on to that, those same organizations are often, often putting informal and formal mentoring programs, sponsorship programs into place so that those women who are high performers or they just want to make the most out of their career mm -hmm. at the level that they're at, they are encouraged to stay in that organization and continue to cultivate their talent within that organization. That is fantastic. It's so great to know that there's going to be a pull and push. But I meet so many women that often say to me, oh, but I'm just not ready yet. So what are some of the things that you mentioned to women um, that can maybe make them more prepared for these great opportunities that these corporations are building the path for? So, so first of all, when someone says that they're not, not ready for it, and, or even if I have those same thoughts myself, I stop and I challenge, whether it's myself or I'll, I'll challenge somebody else to say, you know, if you have the idea and it's something that you want, your experiences and, and your knowledge, your acumen up until this point, will more than likely have prepared you for the challenge that's next. So, so that's one thing I always encourage them to think about. Mm -hmm. Very specifically within organizations, if you don't have, if you haven't had direct uh, revenue producing experience, mm -hmm. I would highly encourage that. So whether it is a sales or business development role, whether it is being responsible for some p and function within a business, those two things on your resume will absolutely help position you for future stretch opportunities in your organization. Well, Amy, I think this is absolutely credible advice. I think there's so many women that are looking to do more but don't have the confidence or haven't heard uh, information and guidance in this fashion. So I really appreciate you taking the time to share this with us today. 
Well, thank you so much. It was great to be here. Well, we look forward to engaging you again. And for those of you listening, check out our YouTube channel, techsavvywomen.tv. Thank you, Amy, so much for joining us. All right. Thank you, JJ.